Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube, and today we're going to be checking out the Eve app. Now, if you've got a lot of Apple compatible smart home products, you might get to a point with the Apple Home app where the automations don't quite do what you want. And let me give you an example. Let's say you've got an occupancy center that you want to use to turn on your lights when it detects occupancy. Now, this is a great way of automatically turning on lights when you walk into a room. However, you don't always want those lights to come on when you walk in a room. You only want them to come on if the light level in that room is low enough. And lots of occupancy sensors, such as the Acara FP2 and the new Meros one, expose a light level sensor as well. What you can't do natively in the Apple Home app without turning something into a Siri shortcut is set a condition that says if the light level is below a certain level and there's occupancy, turn on a light. This is where third party apps come in because they allow you to do extra things. And they all tie into the Apple Home ecosystem, so those automations will still be run by Apple Home. Now, a few weeks ago, I reviewed the Home Plus 6 app, which is a £15 app. Today, we're going to be looking at the Eve app, which is made by the smart home manufacturer Eve, but it's a completely free app and it lets you use all of your Apple Home devices in it. You don't even need to have any Eve products or an account with them, you can just use this app. And this app comes in the format of an iPad, an iPhone, but also a Mac desktop app. And this is great when you're setting up more complex automations. So I'm gonna be showing you the desktop app throughout this video, but I will show you some overlays of the iPhone app so you get an idea of how it kind of compresses down. But all of the functionality across both is exactly the same. So let's dive into the app. Okay, so this is a walkthrough of the Eve app. Now I'm gonna be showing you the Mac desktop version. If you use it on an iPhone, it's basically all of the same functionality. It's just condensed down. But on the Mac desktop version, you've got this sidebar, which you can toggle in and out if you don't want to. Um, and you've got a few things. You've got your at a glance, where you can see things like your cameras to start with. You've got automations where you can see your scenes and you've got your timers and rules as well. And we'll come onto those in a second. And then you've got your zones that you've set up and it puts those rooms in those zones. So it does create a nice kind of easy uh, way of browsing through all of your rooms. So if we click my living room, for example, um, but you can customize that if you hit edit and you can change that if you want to. Um, by clicking that and you can change colors and, and images and things like that, uh, which we're not gonna do. You can obviously see all of your devices. So you can see the status of things like, so this is my router, things like um, cameras, uh, which is currently on privacy mode. You've got lights where they're on. You can click the colors, um, click white, obviously adjust this scroll to do the brightness. Um, and then if I keep scrolling down, you can see we've got uh, like a motion sensor that exposes a temperature. So it's, um, it's 18 degrees and we can tell that from a thermometer there that, it's the, um, that it is in fact a temperature. We've got these motion sensors or presence sensors. So the, you can obviously see that here. So we see for presence sensors, it's unoccupied. For motion sensor, it's clear. And then of course, motion sensors also expose, or rather some do, uh, light levels. So you've got a one lux here on the Hue one, which is in my cupboard, uh, and the light sensor for my living room, which is at 31, because it's a bit of a, a dull day today. So you can see all of that for all of your rooms um, and anything that's in the no zone as well. You've got types if you want to kind of look through different types as well. So you can look at power devices, you can look at temperature, humidity, position, contact, battery levels, um, which is probably one of the most useful things actually. So you can see the battery levels of all of your devices. So you can see what might need changing. So I probably need to change the battery in my dimmer switch at some point soon. And that's the one in the bathroom. So if you've got more than one, you can see those different levels. You've also got this settings up here, where again, you can kind of see different issues that might be going on with your home, things you might need to address. Um, thread network if you've got a thread network set up uh, and I'm just going to allow that to find things on settings so we can see some of the things on the thread network of course because this is Eve's app you've got a link to buy their own products and uh, also to see their news um, but the great thing about this app is you actually don't have to have any Eve product I don't own a single Eve product but I can still use this with all of my home stuff and it works nicely as a kind of Apple Home extension. So let's get into automations because this is where this app actually becomes useful. So you've got all of your scenes here. Um, and the main thing with uh, setting automations in the Eve app is you're gonna want to create a scene for what you want to do first. So automations trigger scenes in the Eve app. And different third-party Apple Home apps create automations in different ways. Um, as I've said in previous videos, the way Apple Home natively does it is when you create an automation, the devices you say you want to be controlled in that automation 
are turned into a hidden scene. So it's a scene that Apple sets up, but you never see it. But that's just how it works behind the scenes. If you use something like the Home Plus 6 app, which I reviewed a few weeks back, um, what that basically does is it creates a scene for you, um, but obviously you can see that, so it just has a random name. The Eve app essentially requires you to create your own scene. So we're gonna work with, um, we're just gonna work with one of these scenes that I've already got created. Um, you've also got things like timers, which is useful. So if you wanted to say at a certain time, do something and you can repeat that as well, uh, maybe daily. Uh, so maybe at 12 o'clock every day, you want to run a particular action. Um, you can obviously change this as well. So you can do it one day a week. You can do it every hour, every minute, every week. So this is really useful for repeating things that you can't do in the Apple Home app. And then rules is kind of actually where this app is really good. So you've got all of your rules, uh, which in, of course in Apple Home we call automations. And if you come away to the bottom here, you can add one. So we're just gonna talk through this. So you've got three things you set up. You've got triggers, conditions, and scenes. So a trigger is kind of what's gonna happen. So if I click trigger and add a trigger, uh, I'm gonna detect some motion. Uh, and so we've got all of these devices. I haven't got to scroll through tons of devices. It shows me anything that detects motion. Uh, and I'm going to detect the living room motion sensor. Now the interesting thing here is that this just picks up the motion from a presence sensor, uh, but actually I want presence. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go into other because it doesn't actually order presence sensors properly at the moment, which is a bit of a pain. So I'm gonna go into living room and I now see all of my devices and I'm gonna scroll down so I find the presence sensor. Um, and you can see here, uh, we've got two occupancy sensors here. So the Akara FP2 exposes each zone. Uh, so here I can actually see both of them. So it exposes the general one and the one I've set up for the dining room zone. So we're gonna just use the occupancy and toggle that on. And we're gonna say occupied. And you can toggle as many of these as you like. So you can have multiple things that are the trigger for your automation. So we're just gonna keep this one, but you could add multiple ones, which of course is a big advantage over the native Apple Home app. And we're gonna hit next. So these are our triggers. We can have more if we want. We can tweak these if we want. So we can see here, this says the living room occupancy is occupied. You can go to types as well if you want to see it as types of devices. So you could combine these if you want, um, but it's worth noting that any trigger will cause it to be evaluated. So this is a kind of either or. So if I had more than one occupancy sensor, if one detected occupancy, it would run um, not both. So this is either or, not and. So we're gonna hit next. And this is where we set our conditions. So the best example for this is to go with another value. So I'm gonna go back into my living room uh, and I'm gonna scroll down to my presence sensor again, which is uh, here we go. So the present sensor exposes a light level. So I'm going to toggle that on. And again, you can have multiples of these if you want. Uh, and I'm going to say less than or equal to uh, 26 lux, which is the current light level and add that. Um, and again, you can add more in here. The difference with this is that all conditions have to be met. So on the last one, it was any condition here, everything has to be met. So I could say living room light level is less than that. And maybe my contact sensor or my record player has contact broken. And if both of those were true, the next thing would happen. You could also add times to it. So if we wanted to um, exact time or day events, so maybe sunrise, sunset, uh, we could say before or after. Um, so we could say before, uh, we could say after 11.10, uh, and then we could add another time event. So we could say, but before uh, 12.10. So obviously that gives us a very specific thing as our condition, which again is something we couldn't qu achieve quite as uh, succinctly in Apple Home. And then we hit next. And basically this is where you just choose the scene that you want to run. So for example, maybe if all of those conditions are met, we want the living room light to come on and you hit next. And then finally, you just give it a name. So you just name this uh, Eve test and you hit done. And then it appears in that list behind us where you can edit it. Now, I don't want to save this because I'm not gonna use it, but that's how you set up some more complicated uh, rules and things in the Eve app, which is great. And that's everything I want to show you in the Eve app. You obviously have extra ways of setting up rules and even more precise automations. 
All in all, the Eve app is probably one of the best Apple Home compatible smart apps out there because it's free and it offers an absolute ton of functionality. And the ability to create really complex automations is really useful. I also like the way it handles those automations by getting you to create a scene for the things you want to control beforehand rather than creating a scene itself and creating a kind of messy home for you. This gives you a little bit more control over what it does. The main downside, in my opinion, is just that the interface feels quite dated. And I guess that's personal opinion, but I think compared to the Apple Home app, it does just feel a very outdated kind of interface. And yes, it does what it says on the tin, but I still want to use the Apple Home app to control my devices because it's a much nicer user experience. That being said, however, this app is free and probably one of the best ways to set up your Apple Home automations if you don't want to go down the route of Siri shortcuts. If you do want to go down the route of Siri shortcuts, there's a couple of videos I've made, which I'll link below, talking you through setting up more complex automations with Siri shortcuts. If you guys found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. If you've got any questions, stick them below. I'll also put a link below to all the smart home products that I use and recommend on a daily basis. Those are affiliate links and will go to Amazon in whichever country you're in. They're also pretty much all Apple Home compatible. I'll see you guys again soon.